All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to the Tuesday, September t uh, 10th, 2019, Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, we're going to be uh, leaving, uh, going into executive session uh, to discuss strategy re with respect to the collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares with the police union. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll review and approve uh, executive session minutes from 625, 723, and 86, 2019. Uh, and then we'll come back and reconvene an open session at 7 o'clock, uh, and I'll, I'll read the agenda then. See you soon. Oh, uh, vote. All in favor. Oh, you can make the vote. Uh, make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Vote. Oh. Purposes of collective bargaining. For purposes of collective bargaining. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call vote. Ed O'Leary. David, yes. Mark, yes. Leah, yes. David, yes. Okay. All righty, welcome back. Um, thank you for uh, allowing us to go a little bit later in the executive session. Uh, so, um, our agenda for today uh, citizens' input at 7 o'clock, 705 Eagle Scout Proclamation. 720 Foxborough Country Club doing business as the Foxborough Country Club. Uh, 735 uh, the police union contract. 750 close the special town meeting warrant. Uh, 8 o'clock selectmen's update. 805 town managers update, although we're going to switch those. Uh, town manager is going to go first. Uh, 810 assistant town manager, and then we'll have a uh, few action items. So, um, Mike, you want to lead us in the uh, pledge? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, here for citizens' input? Well, sure. Oh, <laughs> okay. not. Why not? Keeping us on our toes if you're here or not. It's <laughs> September. Pat Stevens, 63 Mechanic Street. I just wanted to thank Chris or whoever put up that crossing sign on Mechanic as you're getting up to Pleasant. That's all. Okay. I was so pleased. Awesome. Such little things, but big. I think Chris can take credit so, for that. <laughs> thank you, Chris. All righty, anybody else here for a citizen's input? <laughs> Feedback. It's, it sounds like it's coming from the ceiling. Test. How are we doing? No, I don't hear it. Oh, that's better. So maybe that was ceiling. Yeah. Amanda. All right. Well, <laughs> no more uh, feedback. So we're going to have a uh, Eagle Scout presentation. Come on up. Uh, Mom can come up too. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we have a seat right here? All right. Uh, we have an official citation from the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen, on the occasion of this Eagle Court of Honor, commands Joseph Spagnardi. Did I do it right? Yes. Thank you. I've been practicing. <laughs> uh, Troop 32 Boy Scouts of America in achieving the highest rank of Eagle Scout. Recognition is given to Joseph uh, Spunardi for your Eagle Scout project to design and build a, a Gaga ball pit at the Borough Elementary School. Joseph wanted his project to be one which brings kids together and encourages an environment of inclusivity no matter the age. From his initial brainstorm through to design and construction, Joseph remained focused and organized. He cultivated his resources and enlisted the guidance and help of former elementary school principal, building grounds crew, and several local contractors and landscapers. Joseph coordinated this team of professionals and set off on a path of success. Congratulations on your achievement to the rank of Eagle Scout. May this recognition express your, our appreciation for the time spent envisioning and planning the construction of the Gaga Ball Pit at the Burlow Bur Elementary School. The Board of Selectmen is very proud and grateful for your successful efforts and would like to join 
your fellow scouts, family, and friends in paying honor and tribute to you for this splendid achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout and the Boy Scouts of America. This citation is given under the seal of the town of Foxborough on the 10th day of September, 2019, signed by the Board of Selectmen, Mark Elfman, Leah Gibson, Ed O'Leary, David Feldman, and Christopher Mitchell. Good job. Thank you. So we, we need one more signature, but I'm gonna give this to you now anyway. And if you wouldn't mind, maybe some of us old timers, what is a Gaga ball pit? Um, so, you can just, have a seat, so you can yeah. explain to maybe some other people. Yeah, what's he Uh So the pit is based around a game um, that you play, and so it's an octagonal sand pit, mm -hmm. and there's like a dodgeball uh, rolling around, and the kids will hit it with their hands and they'll try to hit it at other kids' legs, and then if you get hit in the legs, you're out of the game, and then gotcha. keeps going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, I've got a picture. Yeah. Yeah, bye. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. I'll use the phone if you want. Oh, you don't need to use it. Sure you can. <laughs> Okay, I just lost your camera. Though. There we go. Okay. Where's your camera? We won't wait for Bill. Oh, oh you, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's all right. Phone. It's all right. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. All I gotta do is double tap. Oh. There okay. There we go. There it's one of these newfangled phones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, two, three. One, two, three. Excellent. Great. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very uh, you're much. welcome. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, I turned 18 in June 1st. You got that just a little bit. Just, just, just the next time, time right? Yes. Try this crazy yeah. that it's a great job. Great job. Yeah. Right. You did a great job. Thank you very much. So we'll, um, Hold on to that just so we can get Chris and Sunday too. Okay, is that, is that all right? Yeah. And we'll get it, we'll get it right out to you. We'll okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Foxborough, Foxborough Country Club um, application for change of manager uh, to Christopher Loper. Christopher Loper, how yes, are you doing? Yes, well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> Good, thanks. <laughs> Welcome to the board. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the change of manager and, and, and yourself, okay. even though we, we have it in our packet. Sure. So I started at Foxborough Country Club about three months ago uh, as the club business manager. Um, started in the business back in 1995 at the Country Club in Brookline and progressed into a number of different roles throughout the last almost 30 years, so. Um, and now going to be running uh, Foxborough. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, you'll be uh, signing off the alcohol. Uh, I'll, I do all the purchasing of all the alcohol, um, signing off on all the billing and everything, so. Uh, any questions from the board? No, no sir. Dave? Nope, I'm all set. No, I'm all set too. Paperwork's all right. all yeah, all paperwork was yep. good. All right, I'll accept a motion. Make a motion to, for a change of manager uh, for the Foxborough Country Club to Mr. Christopher Loper. Second. All righty, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Good, okay. congratulations. Thank you very much, appreciate it. All your decisions were this easy. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good, thank you very much. All righty, um, 7.35, we'll do the police contract. Moving right along. I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Speak that. So the police contract, um, we have come to a uh, settlement that has come before the board this evening. And the, the, uh, this is a two-year contract, which is... Uh, one year retro, and then one year for the year that we're in. It includes a 2% COLA for each year, and um, a number of uh, small stipend increases that are in line with 
other contracts and with surrounding communities. It also um, involves a, a, a small increase in the night differential, 1% uh, increase in education pay for bachelor's degree and master's degree. Um, it involves a, uh, a change that the board had requested and, and uh, has been negotiated uh, for the, that the Board of Selectmen may delegate the town manager to hear grievances on behalf of the town. Um, detail pay for private details, um, which would be effective 30 days after ratification by the board, um, are increasing to $52. And those are the, the main points on this, on this contract. Do you have any questions from the board? No, we, well, not from any questions from the board. We went over it pretty extensively in uh, executive session, so I'm comfortable. All right, I'll accept the motion. So motion. I make a motion to approve the police <clears throat> union contract, uh, contract. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Thank you. Great. Thank you for all your hard work and Thank Mike, you. I'm sure y'all work too. Mike and Mike. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm still working here. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, close the special town meeting warrant. Uh, we'll bring that up. Uh, sure. So, Bill. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, we have um, before you tonight uh, a proposal for 12 articles. Uh, we originally started off around 15. We were able to knock a few of them off because we didn't need them, um, not at this time. So there are 12 articles uh, for consideration. Uh, I'll go through them one by one for you. First is uh, dealing with a contribution to capital stabilization. Um, we had, there had been quite a bit of discussion um, during the last annual town meeting that we weren't putting enough money aside into stabilization. Uh, it turns out through the analysis that the new finance director had done uh, just recently that we're actually $200,000 to the good in terms of where we are stabilization amount should be, general stabilization amount should be. So that's a good news that we don't need to necessarily add additional money at this time. Um, however, capital could use some more money, and it's we're not in any we're not in any violation of anything, but we think it's a good idea to put some more money into it. We have not determined what that number is at this time, but we're going to look at that to see how much money we have available to put into that that we can feel comfortable with and not, and not um, hurt our free, ca free cash position going into next fiscal year, et cetera. So we, we think this is um, it's a prudent thing to do in light of the fact that there's always big capital projects to do. And as we know, this that became, became pretty handy while trying to do the Borough School project. Uh, that was a really good uh, strategic move to make on our part to do that. So we were able to get that done uh, recently. But now that we've we drained that, that fund down to the point where we, we've got some other projects on the horizon that we, we can talk about, and then we'll probably talk about at the, at the financial summit things that we should probably be looking at. Um, and that, now's a good time for us to start putting some money away. So that's gonna be a recommendation that we'll have at that time. And we'll get back to what the number is. This, we're still working on what that number should be. Um, the second thing is, uh, that is to address two uh, budget amendments. Um, one was, uh, these, were two, these were two actions that were taken at town meeting, which uh, we'd like the, the, the town meeting to reconsider and, and look at again. And that is to, to see if the town will, will uh, uh, put back uh, uh, $26,500 $26, in administration salaries. Um, there's quite a bit of discussion that went around that and turned out that it was the, the actions uh, that were taken really were actually resulted in some some challenges that, that legal challenges that, that could have occurred as a result of that. So, I won't. I'll, I'll spare everybody the, the details of that, but certainly it's something that we want to try and uh, address properly uh, at this time. Uh, the second thing is that there was uh, there was a cruiser that was eliminated uh, from consideration um, for fifty six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. Um, that is an additional cruiser above and beyond the three that we've we've already funded. Uh, the need has actually for, gone up to four instead of three. Um, uh, Lieutenant Grace is here, so, so, sort of chief in waiting. Uh, Grace is here. So we want to just uh, maybe can speak to that a little bit, uh, Lieutenant, and speak to the issue of why we need that extra vehicle. Uh, 
Good evening, everybody. So on this uh, particular vehicle, um, it was when we did the evaluation of the fleet and went through the mileage and how many cruises we have. These are frontline vehicles. Um, we had selected four vehicles due to be turned over. All the vehicles uh, were high mileage vehicles and we have replaced three of them so far. Um, and this would be the last vehicle of those four to be replaced. That vehicle today is sitting with 92,000 miles on it. And if it's going to be replaced, I'm very comfortable saying that it's gonna take me eight months to one, get the funding, two, purchase it from Ford, and three, get it in line um, at MHQ and outfitted, just because they're, they're the largest distributor and they do all of the police agencies from New Hampshire to Rhode Island, and you gotta get in line. So based on the what this particular cruiser is averaging, it's this one's averaging 24,000 miles a year. Uh, we have a lot of young offices who drive a lot of miles. So the cost analysis of taking a car with 120,000 miles and using it as a frontline vehicle, three shifts in a row, is, is the wear and tear on that car is astronomical, and the replacement is, is just starts to fall apart. So that's why this vehicle is we're looking to replace it. So nothing's changed. It's the same one that we asked for a town meeting. It is, yeah. It's okay. just you know, I think it's I think it's put on seven thousand miles since we started, and that's all. Nothing, nothing yeah, has I, changed. I think I think it was it was unfortunate that it was it was uh, presented in, in in an unfortunate way because it was there was a, there was no real. They, they, I think the presentation was that there was no real genuine need for it. The, the, the need is very clear about this. This is a this is a safety issue. We should definitely have. Uh, we should rotate them out for for for. Um, Four vehicles now, because what's happened is that there's a lot of uh, changeover in the department, and the and the, uh, the and the requirements of the department have increased to the point where we now have more people on the road doing things, and it's actually putting more mileage on the vehicles. So I think if you maybe you could speak to that a little bit, uh, Lieutenant. Yeah, absolutely. And the um, and we we get into a very gray area when we talk about um, police cruises with that many miles and liability to the to the town. Um, Ford has an extensive um, repair package that you replace the vehicles out over a certain time. Your warranties are all you're all gone. Your drivetrain warranties are, are have all exceeded anything. And essentially, our town mechanics, which are fantastic, they're spending an awful lot of time changing out major parts. If we can avoid those major parts failing, we recycle that car for another three or four years at a different capacity. So if we let it go too long, it's gone. It's just we can't do much with it. And as uh, Mr. Keegan said, uh, we, we do have a large influx of uh, new police officers. Um, our patrol operation is, is extensive. They're, they're doing a nice job hitting, using all their undirected patrol time, and they are increasing the, the, uh, the miles on the cars. Um, we promote that as supervisors for the officers to be out there and be active, and unfortunately there's a cost to being pr pr productive. And, um, we just want to make sure we're providing a safe vehicle for the officers because it gets to a certain point where they do start to ask, like, like, really, like, <coughs> I'm due for a car here. It's, it becomes a little unsafe. And they, and they start to feel it. They feel like they deserve a car that is tight and feels like it can handle a variety of different calls, and um, they, they have to respond, and they want that car to be safe. So we want to make sure we provide a safe vehicle. What, what happens when uh, when you're down a vehicle in the department for a week, say? Well, we just, all the other vehicles take on the burden. So the car that maybe may only has two offices in it, now it runs three shifts every single time. So there's no spare car at a patrol level that we can put someone in. We just don't have that luxury. Um, the cars are all designed with, with, with their computers and their AEDs and stop sticks and uh, patrol rifles that I just don't have the capacity to have a spare car. If it's a spare car and it's, and it's in good condition, I'm keeping it, I'm using it daily. I only replace them when they get to the point of, it's, you're, you're throwing money away potentially. So it puts a burden on the, on the department when, when it you does. have one of your frontline vehicles in the shop, either on a fairly regular basis or for an extended period of time. And if we can keep these miles of these frontline cars below 100,000 miles, 
our success rate is, is unbelievable. Um, between um, the highway department, we don't we haven't with these new Ford Explorers, we haven't had a major crisis with one of the cars. We had a couple factory recalls that we went through, but I've seen the other departments that rack up miles on these cars, and then they start to have some mechanical failures that take time that we got to outsource the dealers, and then they're gone for two, three weeks, and then those miles go somewhere. So they kind of start affecting every, everything else. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. So um, the next one is Article 3, which I think uh, the board is fully aware of. That was the request for the feasibility study for the uh, human services facility. Uh, and um, that request is, um, was made in detail at the last, I think, at your last meeting, so you're familiar with that one. Article 4 is, the, is, uh, is an acceptance of Montgomery Way as a public way. These are all the next, uh, the next two are acceptance of, of, of ways that have been uh, for, have met the requirements of the planning board and, uh, and the public works department are accepted, ready to be accepted as public ways. So that's Articles 4 and 5. Article 6 is, uh, is, the, article, is the Affordable Housing Trust to see if the town will vote to extend the Affordable Housing Trust established uh, by the May 13, 2013 you know, time meeting to July 1st, 2025. Um, there was a there was a, 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 a uh, sunset provision in that in that uh, request originally. So this was this effectively extends it beyond that for the next uh, next five to six years. Um, Article seven is to remove the deputy chief position from civil service. Um, this is the deputy police chief position from civil service. Currently, there is um, we've not had a position a serving a person sitting in, in the deputy chief position for how many years now, Ed? Was it uh, uh, 2013? 2013. When, uh, deputy Chief John Chandler retired. Okay, so we, we have a situation now where, um, if in fact we leave it in civil service, then we're limited in, in terms of how the process will be. Um, we'll have to go through civil service procedures, etc., to to fill the position. Um, it's um, we think we have a good internal candidate to, to help fill that position so I think we're, we're in a position in time now we think we'd like to get that removed from civil service and allow us the flexibility and make the appointment here locally so that's uh, that's article article 8 article 9 is uh, the police contract that we just talked about did you skip eight uh, yeah uh, that was oh, I'm sorry seven. article, article 8 I apologize eight. so uh, one of the things that we um, have noticed in reviewing the the, 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 uh, the charter and um, in, th in the bylaws is that there is no mention of uh, authorizing or including uh, the, the strong chief provision in the, uh, in the town's charter and bylaws, uh, Chapter 41, Section 97A. Um, and so it was, I think it was the 97 chief, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, uh, Ed? Correct. So, so this would be not making it a strong chief, which would allow the, and provided it's consistent with the charter as well. So. So effectively what this does is allow the chief to make appointments but has to still get approved by the town manager in terms of final final authority. So um, so this, this, this actually cleans up that language by allowing that to happen. So it's never been accepted until uh, up until now, so this cleans up that language by, by addressing that. Article 9 is, is the contract uh, we just talked about. Uh, Article 10 is the uh, amendments to the kennel definitions. I have to admit to you I'm not fully up to speed on what these are, but clearly this is a case where the uh, we have not visited our kennel um, provisions here in town for, for many, many years. So this is an up update. This is a request that was made by both the town clerk as well as the uh, the animal control officer, the new animal control officer, and so we're actually trying to include that. You know, that's, this goes for both Article 10 and Article 11. And um, Article... Um, Article 12 is, uh, is deals with um, deals with uh, the issue of public nuisance and animals and violations and penalties, etc. So um, this is interesting to me because I actually didn't think about this until you guys talked about this earlier. This might be an opportunity to take this actually to put that language in and said that the hearings shall be done, conducted I agree. by the town manager. Yeah, I agree. This is the perfect spot. Perfect like spot to do it. Yeah. So we didn't think about that early, but I actually we, we, talk about, we can do that. We might be able to amend that, um, and because it's your warrant, so you can you can actually amend it. 
So would I'll, it be I'll take. Under Article 12, or would you make an article? I think it's out. It would be under Article 12, but I will. I will review that with Town Council tomorrow and check with them on that. Okay. And I'll address that issue. Okay. And that essentially is it. All right. Any uh, questions from the board? All right. That all. So we can't. We can't close it if you're going to amend it. You can. You can close it. Uh, we can always amend it. You can always amend it. Okay. That means if you close it, no, nothing new can come in. Okay. Right. Second. Right. So I, I need a motion from you, uh, Ed, right. on that. Make a motion to close the special town meeting warrant. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. All right, so uh, we're going to go out of order a little bit. Um, we're going to do town manager's update uh, next. So thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to talk about uh, something which I, has been talked about in town for quite some time, for the past uh, couple months. I have been, um, I was involved in a, in, a, in a consideration for a new position outside the town of uh, Foxborough as, a, as, as town manager of Dedham, Massachusetts. Um, I've gone through that process. I have uh, considered it carefully. I've talked it over with my family, and I've decided I'm going to remain here in Foxborough. I've, 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 re I've removed myself from consideration. Uh, the decision is going to be made tomorrow night, from what I understand. Um, I've contacted uh, the recruiter and the, and the town and advised them that I've decided that it would be, be in my best interest to stay here. Um, it was a, th something I thought about, but certainly I think... Um, I, I've enjoyed my work here. I've enjoyed working with this board. I've enjoyed working with the, with the, um, with the department heads. I have a great staff um, that I'm very, very pr proud of. So I, I think it's, it behooves me to try and finish my career here if I can. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to work that out with the board to try and do that. Um, but my goal would be to stay here until uh, December of 20, 2023. That's my goal. Personally, I think it's a great decision. Thank you. Appreciate that. See, I knew you were smart. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a little while to get there, but I was like, yes. But thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, right. Anything else? Yeah, so a couple oh, other things. A couple of things. I um, want to just say that uh, there is a... Um, there were two things I wanted to mention, of course. There we go. Uh, yes, the financial summit is going to be October 17th. Uh, right now, it looks like it's going to be at the Ahern Middle School. Um, this this room, meeting room was actually uh, being used that night. So we will actually plan to have it at the Ahern Middle, Middle School. We're not sure if it's going to be in the cafeteria or in the, um, in the auditorium at this point. That's, that's to be determined. But it, right now, it seems certain that we're going to have it at the school itself. Um, second thing is that um, there has been uh, quite a bit of discussion about Triple E. Uh, recently, and the state has been doing some spraying, and they're going to be starting to do aerial sp spraying as of tonight, actually. Uh, and there is a portion of Foxborough that's going to be sprayed, not the whole town, because uh, it's been determined that at certain sections they're not are not in any kind of danger for Triple E, but certain parts are. Um, I suspect they're probably around the waterways, uh, those types of areas that they'll they'll try and address. But if anybody has an interest and concern about that, you can go to the to the, to the what state the town's website actually we can we can you can, can you can connect with on that on that correct Amanda yes all right so it's uh, it's www.foxboroughma.gov under the health department website and you'll see information about the triple E spraying that the state's going to be taking taking on starting for the next seven days and it'll be for um, there are 57 communities that are involved in that spraying operation and um, obviously for we, we, we try to mitigate the the triple E threat. That's been going on, so that's that's going on as well. So if people want to uh, actually look at their own street, you can go on that site and you can click on it, and it'll actually tell you whether that area is going to be sprayed or not, or so if there's a need to be sprayed. Two people actually reached out to me this mm -hmm. week, maybe because like kids' sports stuff, but particular areas like the Ahern Field, right. the high school, you know, Payson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any plans there. I haven't checked those individual streets, but do we right. have any kind of input into that with those areas of large people gathered at night? Yeah, typically what, what happens is that, and I know they recently sprayed uh, around the stadium recently, uh, this past week, because that, they knew 
a lot of people are going to be at that location, so they, they sprayed that area. So I suspect that they'll be trying to, 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 to focus on those areas that with large gatherings will typically occur, so like stadiums and stuff like that in the city. In, in but the, they don't the know where our towns. kids are at night, at dusk, you know, when there's kids all practicing, like night sports, for example. Yeah, so... Um, so they, they are aware where the schools are located. That's, that's the public the public health departments know that. The question is whether or not there's any kind of a threat at those particular areas as to, at this point. So that's what the states made that determination uh, through various testing that they've been doing. And uh, did you concern them spraying while kids were outside? No, 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 them getting oh. sprayed like Payson, Peri for example, Peri football oh. practice. <laughs> yeah, there's no one. That's not a school. Right. You know, the state probably wouldn't know that that's an area. I, I, you know, I just didn't know if we had any kind of input into. So board of health, the, the Board of Health has been working with them directly on this. In fact, they did a, a long conference call about this today. And that's where I directed yeah, yeah. and was to the Board of Health. So, that's, so if, if there are questions about it, certainly okay. that your, your direction was correct. And, and there is on the Board of Health website, Amanda just pointed out, that there are recommended cancellation times um, and dates on the, um, on the Board of Health website as far as when they're, when they're spraying. Oh, wow. I wonder if that got communicated to the different sports programs. Um, from what I could tell, for a lot of um, communication on social media, a lot of sports teams were adjusting okay. whether they were doing indoor practice or they were canceling it altogether or moving okay. it around. So I think they all get notified as part of um, the state communications, and then um, the health director was also pushing out a lot of messaging as well to um, schools and different departments to be aware of. This is part of a, uh, a statewide phone conference that our health director was involved in uh, today. So this, you know, this information has been pushed out as soon as um, she collected it after a 90-minute phone conference. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. All right, great. Um, selectman's update. Uh, anybody on the board? Okay, I've got a few things. One, now hearing that uh, Mr. Keegan's coming back, we have to discuss uh, contract coming up. His contract's going to be uh, ending soon, so. Uh, I'll uh, meet with Bill next week, and then I'll bring back uh, to the board uh, on the 17th um, what uh, he'd like to see in a new, or work with Mike, too, uh, in a new contract. Um, uh, Bill already talked about the, uh, the summit, uh, the um, town financial summit. Uh, also, um, we were going to have uh, on the 17th a discussion from um, someone from Mansfield on... Um, uh, plastic bags. He was going to make a presentation to the board. He can't make it uh, in sep uh, the sep September 17th meeting. He's going to be coming to our October. We think, we think. He's, he's going to let me know um, with the dates. I've given him. I've indicated that we are we are available. What our schedule is in October. So, so okay. he's aware of that. So he'll get back to us. Let us know. Okay. Um, there will be a um, selectmen's meeting on Thursday. Uh, continuation of the public hearing for the uh, municipal conversion permit. Um, uh, that'll be chaired by uh, Ed O'Leary. Uh, Chris will be back, and, and Dave, uh, Leah, and myself uh, have to recuse ourselves, and uh, we, we won't be attending that meeting. And lastly, he probably thought he got out of it, but uh, today is Dave's birthday. <laughs> Good. Happy birthday. Good birthday, Dave. Happy birthday, Dave. <laughs> you sure you're happy about that? <laughs> And where I haven't been part of a town manager contract, is that typical before that just the chair would meet with Bill and then bring it to everyone and not, okay. So it, you would discuss it and then meet in executive session with, we'll the, with all, all the members, yeah. all we'll the members, forward forward without me being session. there. I yeah, wouldn't so, be. So, yeah. the, so these two meet and then we meet. These two meet and then we meet in executive gotcha. okay. session. Okay. Yeah. And we go, yeah. we go through the. With, with Mike. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we'll go through it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll all hear ahead of time. Won't be that complicated. I can trust you. Yeah. Um, Mike, assistant town manager report. Sure, a couple of things. Um, scheduled things coming up. McGinty Family Fun Day on Saturday, September 14th from 11.30 to 3.30. That's this Saturday. And then uh, Foxborough Music Association Bottle and Can Drive at Town Hall Parking Lot uh, also this Saturday from 9 to 2. Um, sometimes it's nice when you got a couple of um, good events running at the center of town because they, they tend to draw people and they uh, complement each other. Um, um, on that vein, on uh, Saturday, September 21st, 
we have two events going on on the common um, and, and we had this a couple of years ago um, and these two events did complement each other um, so the first one is Foxborough Lions Fall Festival uh, which is uh, Saturday the 21st from 10 to 2 and the POW MIA uh, vigil is uh, is on that same same day so the ceremony is from 4 to 5 o'clock on that Saturday prior to that there's a 24-hour vigil that uh, that takes place on the common um, I have a couple of just general things that uh, that we've been looking at and discussing at length um, you know in administration and human resources to um, to continue to be uh, try to be the most effective and efficient organization and, um, and address the needs of the public one is uh, evaluations uh, so with the contract the police contract that uh, that we just discussed earlier this evening um, you know, we've just ratified the evaluation process that the uh, that the police department uh, has been involved in but now it's it's uh, you know become official and uh, with that we're looking to um, to further develop our employees to best serve the community and work uh, you know as best we can to to have the the, the best uh, most developed uh, employees workforce that we can uh, we're working for succession in in every department in every role and uh, towards that end we are always looking for do we have um, in our system from a systems uh, perspective any single points of failure and we've identified a couple and we're looking to um, to rectify those situations either through uh, cross training cross functional operations or by making sure that we hire people so that we've got a backup so those are things that we're looking at as a backdrop to to make ourselves the, the most effective and efficient we can Great. that's all I have thank you um, all right Ed, some action items can, can I just say one, a couple, one quick couple quick things uh, the other, th the other thing that uh, Mike was able to do today was to take uh, the new director of finance and the new director of accounting around to uh, the various uh, external operations. We're going to do an internal uh, meeting as well with all the various department, department heads so that they can get to know them one-on-one -on -one, uh, and, and start identifying some of the, the operational needs that they have in terms of finance and how we can actually try and do things a little bit better. Um, and, and develop that line of communication, which I think is really important. And uh, I think it was a very uh, helpful dis uh, meeting for them so them they can know where everything is. And number two is to understand, um, is to get to know people on a one-to-one on -on -one basis. Um, George has been more intricately involved in the, in the operation side. Um, Marie has uh, been less involved in turn because she's more uh, in the, in the uh, transactional side of things. So she's... Uh, but it was good for her to kind of meet everyone and kind of get to know everybody. It's, it's going to be, I think, really a, a good step forward for that. And there was one other thing I wanted to mention, too. It will come to me. While you're thinking of it, I'll expound on what you yeah. just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, it was a great tour around Foxborough mm -hmm. for, for George, Marie, myself, and the departments involved. Um, so uh, next week, over the over next week and the following week, we'll be meeting with uh, Library, Recreation, and Fire. Otherwise, we did meet with all the departments that are outside of Town Hall. Once we get to those three other departments, then we'll be meeting with the departments inside of Town Hall. And uh, what what people felt and heard was uh, an open line of communication. Uh, George, our new finance director, said, "My door is open. Pick up the phone." You know, um, email's fine for, for little things, but he wants to hear and connect uh, from people. He's a problem solver. Uh, in addition to being an accountant, a, a, a finance director, he's also been a town administrator. So he knows how to strategically solve problems from, from the high level. I think we're really going to benefit from that sort of perspective. Um, but folks really, really, uh, I think, appreciated uh, meeting these two folks um in, in knowing that they're complementing the the awesome team that we already have in the in the finance department uh, so I, I look forward to bringing them around and meeting with all the rest of the departments and uh, in that uh, we're getting great ideas that have come from 30 years of experience from east bridgewater with george uh, uh eight years of experience 
uh, with Marie uh, on both the, the treasurer side as well as the accounting side, and then all of the creative, innovative um, ideas that are coming from the departments. And that's something that I think is really going to benefit fit them and all of us, mm -hmm. seeing those things come out, things that maybe they haven't had a chance to uh, to bring forward, or just you know, being on, getting around the table and seeing face to face is, is a great way to open dialogue. I thought what it was. I wanted to say uh, congratulations to the craft organization for their, their sixth banner uh, that, that was revealed the other night, and the fact that they invited us to participate in that ceremony this year, which was was actually very nice. It was a nice gesture on their part. It was, um, and it's great to be part of it as as the town of Foxborough. And um, and I and I think they, and they truly appreciate the fact that we were part of it as well, to be part of that that uh, that ceremony. So I thought that was great, and congratulations on a nice win the other night too as well. And great, off to a great, great start. Thank you. Out of Miami. Out of Miami. That's right. All right, Ed. Uh, make a motion to approve. <laughs> Bear with me, people. It's you just lose it. Make a motion to approve the Rodman Ride for Kids application for two one-day wine and malt licenses for Rodman Ride for Kids for Friday, September 20th, 2019, and Saturday, September 21st, 2019. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Just, uh, just a note that uh, the passing of Don Rodman this past week, uh, Don is, is uh, really a uh, been a, a giant in this community in so many different ways, and uh, sorry to see him go, but uh, our condolences to the Robin family. Certainly a loss for the community of Foxborough, even Question. though he wasn't a resident. That's right. Did so much. Work did so much there. for this. Uh, he literally donated millions and millions of dollars to to, to charities and, and uh, various groups throughout the community. Uh, motion to approve public event application for the Knights of Columbus. Foxborough Council 603 to collect donations at road entrances for the common on Saturday, October 12, 2019, at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve block party application on Chadwick Road between Carroll Drive and Villa Drive on Saturday, September 21st, 2019, from 5 to 10. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion to approve Splitsville early liquor license extension request of 11 a.m. for New England Patriots Sunday home games on 9-22-19, 12-22-19, and 12-29-19. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion to approve Jake and Joe's early liquor license extension request of 11 a.m. for New England Patriots Sunday home games on 9-22-19, 12-21-19, 12-22-19, 12-29-19. Second. And just as a clarification, I guess they, um, it, it's not not sure which day the Patriots will be playing on the 21st or the mm -hmm. 22nd. Is that? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's four, that's not a, both. Is that yeah. late? That's like, a late season. Uh, they two right. be determined by the Sometimes NFL. it could be on a Saturday morning. Sometimes that's correct. Sunday morning. Yeah. So do do they have the ability to open up early for liquor sales on a Saturday? I thought the, Sunday was the uh, only day they could do it. Wasn't that the uh, brunch law? That's correct. Yeah. 
So we can only approve it for the 22nd. If it's the 21st, they can't, unless we want to put it on hold and double check it. We should, um, I would approve the 22nd because we know we can do that. The 21st, yeah. we should go back and check. Okay. Okay. You want me to redo the motion? Uh, yeah, and leave out the 22nd for now. 21st for now. 21st. Right? Uh, motion to approve Jake and Joe's early liquor license extension request of 11 a.m. for New England Patriots Sunday home games on 9-22-19, 12-22-19, and 12 29 Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to accept gift donation of $270 from the Friends of Foxborough Seniors to the Council on Aging Human Services to pay for one half of June and July Tai Chi classes at the Senior Center. That's a, that's, I think that's 70, not two. No, he, he skipped one. Skipped one. We'll oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So a uh, motion okay. was made. It was seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. All right. Then go back up one. Uh, acceptance of a gift donation of $270 oh, from oh. the friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's one there. Mm -hmm. Well, the one below it. 10 6. Okay. 10 6. Motion to accept a gift donation of $70 from the students of Gail Larkin to the Council on Age and Human Services to support programs at the Senior Center in appreciation of Gail Larkin for teaching a beginner art class over the summer. Second. Any further discussion? Just under discussion, I asked Bill, like anything under, let's say, I'm just saying, $100 or less, where we've been talking about deferring, like, can we defer it to the Council on Aging or REC or Veteran Services or Town Manager? Just since sometimes we have a lot of these small ones. I mean, I don't know how the board feels about it, but, or if it's even possible. It's a matter of board policy to do that. So maybe it's for discussion another time on the agenda, but. I mean, it's it's within your jurisdiction to do it. Yeah, I mean. To be able to defer to. Uh, you, you, you could set a limit as to how much it has to go before the board. Okay. Yeah, that's something we can share. Yeah, like maybe it's a hundred dollars or under. It doesn't have to come before us, or you know, something just for discussion. Since there's the last couple of weeks, there's been some long lists. So yeah, and short money. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but these are good fillers when we're ahead of schedule. Ten <laughs> eight. <laughs> <laughs> we will, hopefully we can. <laughs> I think it just shows. Also, I, I know they're small amounts, but we're taking seriously enough especially from a, an ethical perspective, yeah. because I, I don't believe we want money just going to agencies without the town knowing about it, as well, random as that might sound. Well, well I think, I think you'd, still finance, the, yeah. you'd still have the application process. It could probably yeah. just be approved. It could be part of, it could be part of the, uh, the town manager's report. Yeah, it's just, I'm just saying, so it would still happen. I've approved this one, this one, yeah. this one. Yeah, these are, these are ones I've okay. approved. Yeah. We'll discuss it. Yeah. Um, all right, all those in favor? Uh, next 10 is the motion to accept a gift donation of $25 to the Veterans Services Department from David W. and Janice E. McCabe in memory of Philip T. Clark. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Veterans Services. Uh, a motion to accept a gift donation of $25 to the Veterans Services Department from Barry and Carol Edward in memory of Ted Ellis. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to accept gift donation of $25 to the Veterans Services Department from Constance M. Garrity and Thomas J. Garrity in memory of Philip T. Clark. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Right. Motion to accept gift donation of $100 to the Veterans Services Department from the Independent Sportsman's Club, Inc., in memory of Philip T. Clark. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion to accept 
gift donation of $25 to the Veterans Services Department from John and Judith Mills in memory of Philip T. Clark. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Ed, do those individually, each um, minute one. I'm sorry. So when you get to the minutes, yes, uh, do them individually. Okay. Uh, I think I have one here. Uh, motion to accept gift donation. Okay, got that one. Thirteen and fourteen. Thirteen and fourteen. Okay, did I complete 13? No. Did 12. No. Okay, so. Motion to accept gift donation of $25 to the Veterans Services Department from John and Judith Mill in memory of Philip Clark. I think you, I think you already did that. Okay. Yeah. Thir so the next one, 13. 13. <laughs> Motion to accept a gift donation. So 2012 and 2014 were the same. Yeah, right. they do either. I think uh, I'll do 1014. Uh, no, we Which did that, so do 1013. So 1013, 1013 is okay. You, need, you can go ahead and read 1013, right? You can read it now. That's not been that's not been approved. It's, it's just that the but it's not on the, the, the recommended action. Do you want me to do, want me to do this one? Yes. If okay. Good. All right. Move to accept a gift donation of hundred dollars to the Veterans Services Department from Thomas G. M. Petro and Elizabeth G. M. Petro in memory of Philip Clark. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Right. Mr. Chairman, could I point out who Philip Clark is? Please. He was like so six in a row. You, you see him, his name a lot there. And uh, this is a, a gentleman who lived his entire life in Foxborough, other than the time that he was deployed away during World War II. He was a recipient of the Distinguished Flying Cross, a staff sergeant in the Army Air Corps. Um, you know, and, and you know, the only other time he lived out of Foxborough was, uh, and, and didn't, you know, earlier in his career, he was with the Foxborough Company. And uh, the only other time he lived out of Foxborough was, uh, you know, these recent years as his health uh, failed. He was an important member of this community, and uh, that's why so many people have remembered him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can skip that last one because it's a duplicate, and I'll correct it. Yeah, 1014 is a duplicate. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to read that one. 1015. Motion to approve 72319 meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve August 6, 19 meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Best one so far. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor. Good thing I don't have a script for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. All right. Good night. Thank you.